As a hazard, if you want to improve your street photography, then where better to get advice from than the legend himself, John Meyerwitz? He is going to teach us how to use actions and angles, how to wait for a moment to develop on the street, and importantly, when to press the shutter, and how a single change of perspective can radically alter the feeling and the mood of our photographs. And the first photograph that we're going to look at is one by a photographer called Eugene Richards. It's called Grandmother Brooklyn. And in this photograph, a lot of people may look at it and go, oh, it's all wonky donkey, everything is squiff, and that is rubbish photograph. But this is what Joel sees. There is a wonderful geometry to this photograph. The girl in the middle tosses a pot of water, perhaps, as some kid we can't see, but imagine might be there just outside of the frame. Eugene Richards catches the swish of the water mid-air as it forms an almost complete circle. Just below the girl, a woman sits in a kiddie pool, which is another circle, while a triangle of water sprays from the fire hydrant. The whole picture is tilted. The bridge, the fence, and the building come together in a zigzag of diagonal lines, and yet it is beautiful because of that. When you look at this picture, or any picture, you realize it doesn't just exist. Someone made it. You can tell this picture was made spontaneously, which gives it its energy in a more controlled moment. The photographer might have been tempted to straighten the frame. I suspect that Richards was a passenger in a car. His point of view seems to be from a lower angle than if he were just walking by. Of course, it could be that he was out in the street and when he saw the girl about to throw the water, he lifted the camera in time to catch her swing. But none of that matters in the end because Richards saw all of the actions and the angles of the place and had a sense of how to get everything in the frame and fit just right. I think this is one of the, the great aspects of this book is that we're talking about simple ideas. And many people I think if you were to put that photograph up online would be sitting there saying, hey, do you know what? It's all wonky and those lines should be straight and horizontal and all that kind of stuff. But if you look at this image, if all these lines were dead straight, right? Everything going on here, this photograph wouldn't have the motion, the movement, the sense of energy that Joel's talking about here. It feels spontaneous, it feels real, it doesn't feel like it's contrived. Everything just works. You've got the lines that have that motion, that movement because of the diagonalist, and then you have also the water that just zoom, shoots across the whole image. Everything just feels really, as Joel has said, spontaneous. So in your own photographs, don't see something that's panning out and going, oh, everything has to be right and stuff. What is more important here, the level horizon or the fact that this photograph feels genuine? Think about the motion, the movement, the energy, the life of being on the street and taking those photographs. But how do we know <laughs> when something is going to happen? Well, for that, we're going to turn to Helen Levitt. And once more, see what Joel has to say. So we have a photograph here called New York City Phone Booth from 1984. And in there, there's a, a lady <laughs> being squished in with two kids shoehorned into the phone box. So what is the lesson in this image that Joel is going to give us? And he says here, people do the strangest things. Why did this little boy force his way into the telephone booth? It looks so uncomfortable. These kinds of unexpected and funny incidents take place all the time. Sometimes you get a feeling that something exciting or surprising is about to happen. You may be even able to predict exactly what is coming. But a lot of time, you just have to watch and wait. Street photographer Helen Levitt saw the large woman in the phone booth with her daughter and stopped to keep an eye on the situation. The scene had the makings of a good photograph. The softness of the bodies squeezed into the hard lines of the telephone booth. But it was when the boy started edging himself into the booth that Levitt made the picture. The space is so tight that his head is bent back and his arm won't fit through the door. They have to be willing to let things play out. 
If something seems interesting to you, hang out for a moment to see if what you think could happen actually does. If Levitt had gotten bored and walked away, she would have missed the best part. So many people these days, and, and I include myself in this, when out on the street, walking around, we see things, go, oh, that'll take a cool picture. And we, we take the, the photograph or we don't, and we move on to the next thing. Here, Helen has seen this phone box. It's in there by the street. And obviously this lady's moved in and the, her daughter's kind of gone in there. And then her son's, you know, completed the photograph. It's elevated to a little bit more. Now, I'm sort of looking at this and thinking if I were in this street corner, I probably wouldn't have paid attention to that phone box. There's a lot of things going on here. There's these bikes, there's the yellows and what have you. There's this little beer bottle or something that's on the street. And yet, this is where I think a great street photographer shows their true colors. It is a lesson in having the patience to just allow the world to do its thing. Because that's where that magic happens, that unexpected moment. But how do we know when it is ready and willing and able for us to press the shutter and take that awesome photograph? So to know when to press the shutter, we're going to turn to Mary Ellen Mark and see what Joel has to say about this photograph of Ram Prakash Singh and his elephant Shyama. It's a stunning image. And Joel you know, says as much because the elephant is so magnificent that you might think this is what the photograph is about. When I first saw the picture, I was excited by the physical presence of the elephant and the way his heavy trunk looped around the trainer's neck. The elephant is great to look at with his massive head and legs and the large floppy ear, the furry hair doing all those folds and wrinkles. And the trainer stands there at ease, the weight of the trunk seemingly as light and as comfortable as a scarf around his neck. Marion Mark was quick to notice the little details that give the picture its grace. The belt in the trainer's hands, the bracelets so perfectly positioned that they follow the curve of the belt, which echoes the loop of the trunk and then the intense look of the trainer's face. The picture needed to go beyond its spectacular subject and perfect geometry. And once Mark got the pieces in place, she knew to wait. And I'm sure she took a lot of photos of the elephant and the trainer in this pose. But then when she saw that both man and beast were giving her the dead eye stare as if they'd both had enough, she knew immediately that the right moment was now. I think there, wow. Look at me getting all excited about that. Here is a fantastic lesson. The picture needed to go beyond its spectacular subject. How many times have we seen photographs of somebody who looks kind of interesting, maybe a punk or somebody who loves a dread, something, and, and people think that's just enough to carry the photograph. That image of you know, the elephant and the trainer, if I'd taken that thing, if you'd taken it, we would have gone, wow, this is uh, like, so amazing. And it probably wouldn't have been as good. And this is where we start to separate out the, the simply good photographs from the amazing. And you see it all in the expression. Joel's talking about that expression. Look at the eye. The, the trainer's one thing. You can tell a trainer or somebody to look at you and give you the, but it's another thing to allow, to, to have an elephant match that intense gaze. If the, if the elephant had been looking off somewhere or just anywhere else, not straight down the lens, this image would be good but it wouldn't have that little something that elevates it. That curve that Maivitz was talking about, all this stuff, you know, the shape of the elephant and everything is so beautiful and, and it's, it's, just, it's really fantastic. None of it means anything if you don't have the ability as a photographer to understand this picture needs a little bit more and then know what it is when you're going to photograph it. This is not a case of just machine gunning through in the hopes that one of them is a picture. It's about trusting your instinct, about going, something's going to happen here. And if the moment feels right, 
press the shutter. Press the shutter. Train yourself to become in tune with these moments. Like we were talking about with the, the phone box. Train yourself to see events panning out and to get in touch with that flow of the moment where everything just peaks and that will take your photographs to a whole different place. But there's one final thing that we need to look at if we really want to you know, influence the way that people feel about our photographs. And for that, we're going to turn to Gordon Parks. This is, Gordon Parks is a fantastic figure in photography, not just a very talented photographer who created many iconic photographs, but also a film director who did all the shaft films. Like, <laughs> you know, who knew? But we're looking at this image here called Black Muslim School Children, Chicago, 1963. Joel is talking about perspective. And he writes here, the way we see and understand is radically altered by our point of view. Take this photograph, for instance, there are some small boys in a doorway. Notice that the smallest boy is carrying the biggest package and that they're looking up at the man standing in front of them. We have no idea what is happening, so the picture is a puzzle. Gordon Parks saw the kids in the doorway and then made a choice to kneel down to frame the picture at the same height as the boys and from underneath the man's arm. By taking the photograph from this angle, Parks was able to capture the various expressions on the boys' faces. Suddenly, this simple scene of boys in a doorway is charged with drama. He made the choice to change his perspective and that changed everything. Try experimenting with your perspective. Watch life from new vantage points, lie on the ground in a spot where you would normally stand or stand still in a place where you would ordinarily be moving through quickly on your way to somewhere else. You may notice and maybe feel something that would be hidden from you otherwise. Feel something that would be hidden from you otherwise. I think that's a fantastic piece of advice. Just changing up the way that you feel about an image when you look at it. If you look at this photograph, you know, all the school kids there, this change in perspective has done a couple of things. If we were photographing it from the top down, perhaps over this chap's shoulder, those kids, they would be quite small in the frame. They would be overawed by these figures, the backs of people looming over them. But instead, something interesting has happened. They're looking up in an almost expectant kind of way, right? The kids have, this guy, he's got a happy face. He's, he's not so sure about going to school, but look at this little lad's face here. <coughs> he is framed, not just by his friends, but also by this arm and this door frame. You wouldn't have that kind of framing if we had the perspective from down above. And something else has happened here when this framing has occurred. These are young kids, they're going to school. This is their teacher, they're being introduced to their teacher for the first time perhaps, and with the framing of this teacher, and the arm that comes over like this, look at what that does to the children. They are protected. They are contained within this space. The kids are meeting their teacher who is saying to them, Come with me, I am going to teach you, I am going to keep you safe, I am going to help you grow and develop in this world. This is a safe, comforting environment. And all of that comes about because of that framing. This is a framing that works because it is the person. It makes sense in the environment. Everything there just feels beautiful. So when you're out and about, and you're looking for framing things, don't just think about, you know, how things are going to look, if they're going to be like kind of cool and, and groovy. How is it going to change the mood, the feeling that the person's going to get when they look at your photographs? If you want to find out more about Gordon Parks, his lovely, awesome photographs, I did a whole video about him. Go check it out over here. Thank you ever so much for watching. It's been an absolute pleasure, and I will see you soon. Cheerio.